Hey there, good morning. It's Phil Thatch, and I am in Dayton, Tennessee again. And today I don't have my vlogging camera, so this is going to be an experience doing all my vlogging with an iPhone. Put this old iPhone 14, not even Pro, not even Max, just basic iPhone 14 does do 4K24, so I'm using it. Let's see how it goes. Today I've brought the Canon R6 Mark II, and I'm giving the 200 to 800 another chance. Let's see if I can get some sharp shots with it today. I learned when I shot the lens at some test charts that it's a little sharper at f10 than wide open at f9. So today I'm going to shoot at f10 at around seven or 800 millimeters. Let's see how that goes too. The first bird I got a shot of was a red winged blackbird. And I got it in the exact same spot that I got a red winged blackbird a week or so ago using the Sony gear. And I bet it's the exact same bird. This must be that bird's territory. And the problem with the shot was there's bright sun on the background and the bird itself was in shade. So a black bird in shade with a bright background may not be the best. Here's that red winged black bird. I was at 707 millimeters, which I've learned is a pretty good focal length with this lens and F10, one five hundredth of a second ISO 640. I had a comment recently that was missing my settings down at the bottom of the screen. Lately, I've been just letting Lightroom display the settings up here in the top left. So if you're missing the settings, they're here. They're just up here in the top left. And I like to hit the full screen button, which is F in Lightroom and let you see the full screen shot. And this shot did come out better than I thought it was going to. I was able to brighten up the bird a little bit and darken the background. It's still a really bright background and a really dark bird, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Cause like I say, the background was in the sun and the dark bird was in shade. I've come to a different location now. Blythe Ferry Western Ramp. Saw a few birds here, some great blue heron, and a duck that I think might be a ruddy duck. I, I think it was a female ruddy duck, and I think she was injured. She kind of was favoring one of her feet as she was preening, but uh, made a few shots of the great blue heron and the maybe ruddy duck. Let's see. At this location, there's a famous great blue heron that everybody calls Homer, and I don't know how to identify him. And I don't know if this is Homer or not, because there were four great blue heron at this location today. This is 1 500th F10, 500 millimeters, ISO 160 of the great blue heron. The 200 800 did pretty good on this bird. Here's another shot. I think this is actually a different great blue heron. This one's 800 millimeters F10, 1 800th. ISO 320, and I was able to crop this one to 16 by 9. Not bad in terms of sharpness, and the colors are nice as well. I really struggled to get this ruddy duck, and I was able to positively identify this as a female ruddy duck. I really struggled to get a sharp shot of her, and this is one of the sharpest ones, and it's not very sharp. 800 millimeters F10, 1 800th of a second. There's an osprey nest right on the side of the highway, up on top of a telephone pole, and I stopped here and made a couple of pictures. Here's the Osprey. It's up on top of a power pole and these are actually power lines that you're seeing here in the foreground right here and over here on the side. And it looks like they put something on the top of this power pole to try to get the Osprey to not make a nest here, but it didn't work. And they've been building a nest here every year for the last several years. And I was just parked on the side of a road that is off of Highway 58 and made this shot at 707 millimeters F10 and one eight hundredth of a second of the osprey on the nest. I stopped by Harrison Bay State Park on the way home, and I found a yellow rump warbler hopping around in a tree just outside the window here. Made a few shots of it. Here's the yellow rump warbler at 742 millimeters, F10, one eight hundredth of a second. This shot, it was a long way away. The light was weird. Uh, this was the best shot I got, and it's not very good, but it's nice to see a yellow rump warbler. I'm continuing to drive through Harrison Bay State Park now and just out the window in a different location, I found a red winged blackbird that was just really pretty close and with good light on it. And it even had some red bud blooms in the background that I thought was nice. So I got that shot. And then before I started the car back up and started going, a uh, robin was just outside the car. I think I was only using 500 millimeters to get that shot. I was really happy with this red winged blackbird. I like it when you can see, cause it's, they have this color right here, which some people might call it beige, some people might call it yellow. And then above that, right about here is usually red, but this one has feathers covering up its red feathers, 
But other than that, I'm really happy with these shots. This is 800 millimeters, F10, 1 800 of a second. And what a beautiful bird. And this is a really scraggly looking redbud tree growing wild behind this tree that the, that the red winged blackbird is in. But I did like the color in the background of these shots. So here's the first shot that I decided to share with you. Here's another one, and I had dropped down to 707 millimeters for this one, still at F10, as all my shots today are. And here is another one, also 707 millimeters F10. So I was able to get three shots of the red winged blackbird with the red bud tree, which is a famous native tree of the southeastern United States in the background. All three pretty good shots. I was happy with these, and the sharpness isn't that bad. Actually, almost pretty good in these shots. Here's the American Robin on the ground, 637 millimeters F10 for this shot. And then it came even closer and was actually right on the side of the road. They had just repaved this road or laid down some new asphalt and you can see it's nice and dark. And this one's only 432 millimeters at F10 of the American Robin on the ground, just outside the car. Well, now I'm out of the car and walking around in this field here at Harrison Bay State Park. And I'm trying to keep this 200 to 800 right at 707 millimeters, which I found out during my testing that 707 millimeters at F10 is relatively good with this lens. So that's what I'm working on now. And I found a bluebird in a tree just over there, a male bluebird, and got a couple of shots of it. Here's the male Eastern bluebird at 707 millimeters, my favorite focal length with this lens, F10 1 800th of a second. Turned out pretty nice, not perfectly sharp, but fairly sharp, and I do like the colors. I wish this shadow wasn't on the bird right here. Otherwise, I, I kind of like this shot. I think I managed to get a few more birds in this field. I don't want to name them all because I'm not sure which ones came out okay and which ones didn't, but let's look at the rest of the birds after the bluebird. This was a surprise. Harrison Bay State Park is very close to the lake, and most of it is on the lake, but the area I was at was kind of a little ways away from the lake, but I looked up and here comes an osprey flying by with a fish. It's a crappie, I believe. And I wasn't set up for birds in flight, but I was at 1-800th. And I just kind of tried to catch it. And I did manage to somewhat catch it flying by with this fish. There are some tree swallows in this field. They've got some birdhouses around and I think there's a pair using it. There's also a, an observation platform and that's where I got this photograph. Not as sharp as I would like, Another 707 shot at F10. And here's a mockingbird that was in a tree at the edge of the field, a 600 millimeter shot at F10, still at 1 800th of a second. And I was shooting it at more focal length, but I've got to thinking, hey, I like to crop 16 by nine. So I zoomed it back to 600 so I could get my regular 16 by nine shot. A beautiful Northern mockingbird. I'm back home now and I'm really teetering on the edge of, should I keep this lens? Should I sell this lens? And, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I really haven't decided. When I first bought it, I said, oh, I'm keeping this lens forever. But then I started noticing that every time I went out, I had struggles with it and my sharpness wasn't where I wanted it to be. Today, shooting at F10, I think that did help. So that uh, kind of makes me lean a little bit closer to keeping the lens, but I still haven't decided yet. I hope you enjoyed today's content. If you did, reach down, give me a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. If you want to see some more stuff like this, subscribe and hit the bell. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.